What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to another episode of the Team Never Quit Podcast. As always, thank you guys for listening and watching, and please don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button wherever you get your show. So today, before we kick it off with our very special guest, let's go with our usual Patreon question of the day. And today we have, which daily tasks do you tend to procrastinate? That's a, that's a good question. One. That's a tough one. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was going to be a little easier than that, Hunter. <laughs> I know. I, I just looked at this one as well. It confused me. Daily task that I tend to... Now, if Marcus isn't home, I procrastinate on making the bed. He makes the bed every morning as soon as I'm out of it. Or why you're I'd make it with her in it. Or, or sometimes <laughs> if I it's a, I'm the, the freaking our admiral always said that, make your bed. I sit around and wait for her to get up. I'm gonna look at her like, you gonna get out of the things yeah. I make? But when he's not home, I feel like I still have to make it. Like he's somehow watching what I'm doing. Judging, watching. Yeah, so I will make it. I just tend to be later on in the day. I would say that that would be the thing that I procrastinate on. Mm-hmm. Go I don't know, man. I'm thinking too, man. <laughs> I was gonna say it's, it's it's hit me right between my pretty brown eyes. I'm just like mm-hmm. stumped right now. I'm kind of far along in the game to where anything I did procrastinate on, I kind of got rid of. I know. Yeah, I'm, I'm the, I'm same, the same way because I would say like going for a run or going to the gym, but I usually, it has to be that. I usually knock that out. I do it anyways, but I will kind of. <sighs> You know, the yeah. cold plunge. If anything, that would be the yeah, one. Yeah, when I have I to stretch and when I got into getting the cold bath, mm. I'll try and I'll, I'll push that back. We definitely depends on the weather, too. When we go it always to stretch. depends on the damn weather, man. Mm. Yeah, the stretching thing. We complain Which on is the, the way. easiest thing to do. It's not like you're having to go back in the gym and lift steel, trying to get huge, or anything. You're like, no. Walk your ass in there and sit down and stretch. It's the most wonderful thing on the planet. And I don't like to do it. <laughs> and I can't figure that out. It is utterly baffling to me that I don't I don't like to do that what do you got I I don't have anything man I'm really if I'm if I'm up I just I'm go mode it's don't think you know what in the winter time I don't like starting my car so you know going out to start the car and then my wife takes the kids stepping out the cold so it's out there the cold cold, you know you still wake it up so I would Mm. say that that's going to start the car I know there's one I'm missing. I, this might be so Somebody will say, I'm like, oh, I absolutely procrastinate I would on that, say dude. Leaving the house for us, that's a good one because leaving the house, it takes a lot for us to just want to leave out of our driveway. We like to be here. So if <laughs> just we have watching an errand, the time go by, yeah. Yeah, yeah, if do we I have, have an errand to, to run or something, we're like, oh, do we have to do it? I mean, that Uber delivery might have been the worst thing for us. Yeah. For sure. Because if someone can just deliver my stuff, I won't leave this place. Mm-hmm. We've literally built a place here that I don't have to leave and I don't want to, so it, it gets tough. Yeah, everything delivers. All the shopping and groceries and even <laughs> Lowe's. Everything delivers out here, and we're in the country, so it's a pretty much a dream world around here. That's a good question. Yeah. All right. Mm-hmm. So let's get to it. All right. All right, buddy. Finally got you in here. Yeah, you do. <laughs> I don't know if I should run now. Or... I was thinking about the time when you and I met for the first time. It was over a phone. Correct. So you met my brother for the first time. So I'm just to give people an idea of what's going down right here, man, is my brother and you met, found you. Yeah. Yes, saw you first. Yes, he did. And how many years has it been now? Oh, well. Six, I... seven, eight, ten? Yeah, right around ten. Ten, ten, twelve, right? Give Something like that? Yep. And you're an artist. Mm-hmm. And you're in the Navy. Mm-hmm. You're married. Yes. And you got kids. And the main reason you're here is because you're an artist. That's how you came into my life. Right. I was looking for something. My brother haphazardly ran into you. Okay. That's the general story. So to back it up, yeah. where are you from? So so originally from Queens, New York. Okay. And Born when? Uh, 1985. So back in the 1900s. Yeah, yeah. yeah, all right, check. <laughs> That's important. October 7th. And then raised in Queens. And you want me to just go right in? Yeah. I want to hear about... Are you real Queens material? Like your parents are from there? Because I can hear it in your voice. Really? I thought I lost it. No, no, no. Okay. Do your parents have it real bad? So my my mom, like she came to visit even for the holiday and you could still hear it, you know, I would say. um, But yes, Queens, Ridgewood, it's borderline Brooklyn, Queens. It's the people from there know what you're talking about. Yes. People who don't, don't. Correct. It's 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 in the five boroughs. It's not upstate. It's not Buffalo. Sometimes you hear people. Oh, I'm from New York. 
And then you ask, oh, where? Okay, so when you live down here in the South, and people are like, I'm from New York, we automatically think you're from the city. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm talking down Manhattan, downtown, everyone thinks that. No one has any idea that Northern New York is beautiful. It's all wooded, it's West Point, that area, yeah. Buffalo. Buffalo's great too, it's cold. Got a good Very football cold. team, great football team this year, actually. But you're from the you're from, city. From the from, city. From the city. Mm -hmm. and, that's, and that's really kind of how even the, the artwork kind of even came to play, you know, that kind of played out from being in New York, being raised, and then uh, by my mom, no dad in the picture. Period. Period. Growing up in Queens, uh, it was it was rough. It wasn't like, oh, pretty Queens. Single mom your whole life, kind yes. of. Yes. So, uh, if mom, you if you do watch this, I love you. <laughs> you know, this is, I will make sure we let her know that yes. too, bro. Yeah. It, it came to the point where being raised without the dad role prior to the, the, the going live, you know, I was telling your husband just about fatherhood and stuff, but not having that male role model, it just it led me in a different path. You know, my mom did her very best to raise me, but she was also trying to pay bills, take care of two other. So children. when we, when people say that, when guys say that. Like, hey, I had a single mom. She could raise me. She did the best she could. But there's something about having a guy around. Yes. They don't even have to say anything. They just be sitting there. Correct. Somebody you, you can look at. That's what, that's, someone told me that. And at the very least, when I'm trying to be a father, at least I'm sitting there. That's right. That's right. And no guy likes to be a dad. I mean, I, you know, we could bullshit all day. I'm like, hey, we get good at it. It's a full-time job. Yeah. Full-time job. In the beginning, there's no books. We're not ready for that or anything like that. So just the fact that you just show up. Is, is everything. So I think from missing out on that structure, on that discipline, the, a role model, what to follow after, that being gone, it just was just a, a segue into the streets, you know, and then I wind up getting around the wrong crowd, trying to fit in, and then it would just, it, it went like. what mom do? She was, uh, I would say, she jumped around a few jobs from waitressing to okay. administrative to just trying to make it. Just trying to, yeah, just trying to survive. It wasn't living when we were younger. It was survival. Sure. Yeah, and because it? of that, you were just moving schools and moving homes. Yeah, and... so even even this past holiday, we, I, I was telling her I was going to be on the podcast, and she said, share the story. You know, I, And I was asking for permission because I'm not trying to paint my mom in a bad light. You can't. Mothers are painted in an awesome light. That's why they're mothers. <laughs> That's right. And she said, she's like, no, Anthony, share it. So I was in about more than 11 elementary schools. Uh, we moved around a lot. It was constant changing, and now that I'm older, I look back, and that wasn't normal. Mm -hmm. And then that- Oh, it's not. Most people don't even leave the town they grew up in, bro. Like 50-something right. percent of all human beings, I think, not just Americans. And then you got military brats who move around, and then you got somebody like you. Moving around in the same area. Area. Yeah. So now you're grown, that's probably a benefit, because look at how, you got, how many people you got to meet, how you got to meet them, you learned at a young age. You know, most of the time that takes, growing up even just adjustment making friends and then them being ripped out of your life and then just being the new person over and over and that over. sucks it right did, it did. being the new guy it all did. the time it did and it, and it played out and then i would say even with tied in the mix of that then you throw in mom was heavy into alcohol so as at a young age you know it wasn't normal for an 11 year old to be holding his mother's hair she you know she's puking in a toilet bowl she had a good problem yeah she it was a, she was a heavy hitter you yeah, know yeah, right. and and you know then you, there would be this these moments that a son was not supposed to share with their mother their parent and it just hey i i truly believe that's a thing there's some things that there's a separation between the mom and the, and the son there was no boundaries you know and i think it's it's my mom was doing everything she could to cope and like i said it's it's really it played out as much as she tried. It, it came to the point where I just I found acceptance in, in the street life. Young guys, you know, womanizing player. Fun. Fu yeah, you know. Fighting all the time out of the street. Yeah, I get it, man. It, it, was, it got to the point where it was just doing things that a, a 14, 15-year-old probably shouldn't be doing or in environments shouldn't be at. And that played out and into, you know, the graffiti scene. Is that how you started? So that's how it really started with the vandalism. Yeah. And and painting on trains and running with the crew. So let's talk about that for a second. Because the trains that pull through the town, every one of those cars is tagged. Mm -hmm. And some of them are exceptional. Yeah, there's, there's hit or miss, yeah. 
You hit, them, hit him in the yard, right? So you hit him in the yard when no one's around, cognito. You know, we go in, to, you know. Y'all right. I always <laughs> wondered, is like, if you wanted to deliver a perfect, fuck, like if I'd had to teach my kid, which I do, how to be a spy, a CIA, okay. the most covert yeah. operative ninja on the planet. I was like, if you want to pass a message covert, right on the side of a train yeah. and find out where that train's going in the other town, have your boys parked there waiting. Because sometimes, I mean, y'all can get pretty, pretty detailed with it. Yes, it was, it was our way. It was our social media back then, I guess, you know, to go viral or to be known. And it, it, so the graffiti was an outlet to express, to cope with certain things. It was just a, I guess, a way to, you know, escape reality of the pain, things that were happening. But it's, some people use it to mark territory, right? That too. There, there, there's a lot of, as far as time's sake, there, there is a lot of that goes into it. But I, I was just fascinated by the art, right. the art set, you know. How did you get a hold of all the the paint and all of that at that age. It, it, it wasn't, um, it was stolen. Oh, you stole it. Yeah, yeah, all right, <laughs> right, right, yeah, go. We would go in, you know, and they're not, they're, you know, this, this stereotype or a person behind the cashier that, you know, it was just, this, you would have someone distract, you would have sure. a scene. That's the thing too, most people overlook, especially shop owners. Yes. Who you have in there working, like if someone walks in, they're gonna ask the first place in the ID. And then you sometimes have insiders, you know, and you could always hook them up offline with other stuff, trade-offs, things of that nature. But I never it, in a million years thought that anyone stole spray paint. That's how naive I am. <laughs> I never just, thought yeah. that that was a thing. And, it's and, and, and um, it, it just came to a point where, like I said, it's from that, it just, trajectory of the, gra the graffiti, it's... Because you switched your art. So I did switch You went to canvas, your, your canvas has changed. So I did that later on. It got to the point where the graffiti went from that to running with with people that were chasing after the wrong storm yeah and Cause some of those graffiti artists are, are so good they stay anonymous like i kind of studied that a little bit some of your guys like they'll do a painting up on the side of a bridge it's impossible to get to and it looks amazing you don't even want to call it graffiti actually like banksy yes yeah yes is that what his name is, is yeah, yeah one of his, he's one of them yeah he's he's definitely up there i would say I just did it more of just an outlook, you know, just to kind of, like I said, get away from what I was happening in the home front. And then it, it just kind of fast forward, it just wind up leading, it, it just opened the door to other avenues, other things that I, I wasn't anticipating being on that other side. So did you, when you were in the moment of living that life, did you get caught by the police? Yes, I actually wound up did getting arrested one of the times, actually by, it was a taxi driver, it was a yellow cab we're there spray painting, you know, the term's called bombing, and we're there and a taxi drive car drove by and we just kept going and the next thing you know, it just it pulled up with, with sirens. It was a yellow, like a New York cab, but that's how the, the undercovers, you know, they, they're The sneaky. cop was in a yellow it was a, cab? It was, a few, it was two cops, uh, but it, tax, it, it yeah. did look weird when they drove by because yeah. they were both in the front seat. <laughs> yeah. no oh, the how back. funny. You look like it too. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like some of the guys, are like, hey, you yeah. got the cover part, I get, but you guys just look like cops, so, man. But yeah, no, I was, I, I wound up getting actually arrested three times, and it was, it was, and, and when you're in the back seat with those shiny cuffs on, you know, you start just mm, you got some different kind of jewelry. Correct, and it was just, it just got to a point where it was just regret, 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 and so I, you do feel bad. So looking back, yes, but then at the same time, that's just who I was at yeah, that true. age, and and then as I got older. I wind up taking it a little bit more serious and trying to use it to be lucrative. And what age is this? So well, go ahead. I, I think you're skipping something. I specifically, let's talk about the recruiter. Oh, how I got into the Navy? Because how he met the recruiter was at the same time That's period. That's right. No, it's, I'm, it's good yeah. that you both reeled that back in, Melanie. So I was now I'm 18 years old. I'm working two jobs. I'm doing construction, demolition at nighttime. And then during the morning shift, I'm doing Starbucks. And I'm leaving the city, and I'm I'm just I'm just miserable, I'm hating life, and then just trying to figure out how I'm gonna make the next you know mortgage or rent at that time. And then I I'm in the train station, I'm walking, I got coffee stains on my shirt, and I see this recruiter back then there in their whites, and he comes over to me and he hands me a pencil. So at this time I was like a vigilante rebel, so he gave me the pencil and I just chucked it. And then I walk away, you know, minding my own business. And he comes back up to me. It's no more conversation. Now this is a problem in the New York state of mind. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. And I, so I said to him, I was like, what's up? And he goes, you know why I gave you that pencil? And I was like, no clue. He said, you look like a sharp guy. 
And I said, well, you look like a liar, <laughs> you know? And I, he was trying to sell the like You sell used cars or something, man. <laughs> he was trying to sell the sizzle, man. <laughs> Especially in those whites. <laughs> and I, so I told him straight up, I said, you know, I'm broke, busted, and disgusted. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm telling him, I said, you could have gave me five bucks. You gave me a pencil? And he's like, you ever thought about the Navy? You ever thought about the military? And by the way, this on your show, this is the first time I'm coming out publicly that I was in the Navy. I never, ever told anybody. I never went. On really? social media, yeah, I've never shared that. Never. I've gone, I thought that was the coolest part. I, well, well, it's gonna, it's gonna be. How you remember? We're getting into that, but yeah. So, so, um, but to to put the cork on the bottle on that, it, it when he gave me the the pencil, I just remember I chucked it, and then the next thing I know, in a few months, I'm you know raising my hand. That and, shit worked. And it, it, the it, same dude. And you know what? It, it's it's crazy because deep down inside, I knew I needed something like that. And I, and I could say this publicly, that joining the military, joining the Navy, hands down, one of the best. That's like some Jordan Peterson, not Jordan Peterson, Belfort. Hey, sell me this pen. <laughs> Remember that from Wolf of Wall Street? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that guy? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, dude, he goes like, Definitely. freaking, he dropped a pencil on you <laughs> no, and no, got you into no, the Navy. And, uh, uh, Petty, his name was Petty Officer Shep, Shepard Shep. I you still know him? him? I've seen him. He's now as a, he's, I think he went Mustang, so he's an uh, officer, officer now. I, but I have lost contact. But uh, no, it, and the recruiters, they got to do their job. But he was legit. How about them guys? Those guys can get you. Anybody, any man that can sell you into the military has got a gift. That's right. That's right. Mine got me. He was a SEAL. Bo Walsh. Still know him. I mean, he, he, he had me from the get-go. But some of those guys are great at selling it. Some of them aren't. So I'm make your way run away from it. Right. What did he tell you you could do in the military? Uh, another great question. So originally I was going to go in as uh, uh, aviation parking jets, and and I was thinking that, and I didn't have the highest ASVAB score, so it was limited, and I I wind up getting into trouble. So originally I was going to go in as an aviation. I believe it was a. Uh, a hand, some type of a boats and handler, possibly. I don't remember. Like that. an ordinanceman? No, not that. It was um, aviation. It'll come to me, but I wound up just getting into trouble at the Starbucks. <laughs> Lost my my cool, and I just remember calling my recruiter. I called him. I bleeding. I, I was like, Hey, I just quit my Starbucks job. I need to go into the Navy now. <laughs> you know, he's right like, now. <laughs> and yeah, and yeah. he was like, No, nah, it ain't happening like that. You're supposed to go in at a certain time frame. So we wound up speeding it. Like fast forwarding, the only way to get in ASAP was going undesignated. Oh, that's what he sold you on? No, no, no. Oh, no, that's the that's no, the freaking here, here comes the, the the frying pan, but bing, where I wanted to meet with another recruiter and and it was closer to my city and he was like, Man, go undesignated, you go there into the fleet, you just tell your your chief, Hey, you wanna work with this department for that day and definitely that's not how it works. Well, no. <laughs> let me tell you. When, that is when, not how that works my, at all, when man. When I got to my first command, I'm all, you know, gun ho I'm undesignated. You know, and when I say it, it looked like I was in, in a group of people that were doing community service. It wasn't a smile. The chain gang. It, it, it was. It, it wasn't. Dude, a, them freaking guys look like they're miserable, man. No, it was a group of hooligans. Everybody, you, you know, the guy next to me at ranks or quarters, you know, he, he burped and I, I got hung over. I, I was just, it, it was to the point where I was like, what what am I doing? Yeah, like, how'd you get here? I lost a bet. <laughs> you know, that kind of guy. Yeah, I was supposed to go to jail. Yeah, that's freaking. The judge let me go. And I, I tried, and it, it was, you know what? And it's not the, it's not the worst. It is tough, and I wound up getting lucky, but I wound up getting uh, striking out eventually. I went engineer, and before how I got into the engineer, um, I wind up uh, going to Iraq. So I did a deployment in Iraq. It, this is oh, when they right, right out of camp? No, no, no. I would say uh, second year in. Oh, check. They were gonna, they were gonna go to deployment, but I wound up volunteering for uh, IA at the time. It was called an individual augmentee. Oh, yeah, and I wound up doing. A, I went to Camp Buka to do detainee operations, and that as was, an undesignated. As an undesignated, and that was really rewarding. It was it was patriotic on a whole nother level. The camaraderie, seeing the army. Yeah. This is right when they were talking about going purple. Yeah. This was like in that merger of branches. I remember. So, but uh, after that, came back to the fleet. Wanted to get you know capped or advanced quickly. Like, were you at the creek or you in? No, I was at at that time. I was at Naval Station Norfolk. I oh, was okay. on the USS Iwo Jima, LHD. On the Iwo, and then from there, got orders to EXW Expeditionary Warfare Community. It was like junior varsity SWIC seals with like a bunch of wannabes trying to you know drive boats. Just yeah, it was it was it's a small community. It's a group. And I wound up doing that, which was fun. Did two deployments with them. 
and then I, I cross rated out or transitioned to a special program that was called Navy Drug and Alcohol Counselor and in Portsmouth. <laughs> That's just the Navy program as it is, that, bro. It, 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 Alcohol. It don't get, get any navier than that. Beer, right? that's what we do, man. And that's, so at Portsmouth Hospital, at this time, I'm at E5 now, and people, knew, anyone that knows me knows I have a great admiration for SEALs, the Trident, Buds, I'm just, who doesn't? And, but at my command, I was getting ready to go back into the fleet, but at, we had like a quarters, and one of the, the petty officers, the LPO, leading petty officer, she was like, hey, uh, Latrell, uh, Morgan was um, medevaced to Portsmouth. So at the and when she said, it, I was like, Morgan, no, Marcus. And she's like, no, it's his brother. And and I was I was and my first thing I was like, is he okay? I wanted you know, do I go bring him a cake or a, you know something? <laughs> a, here's an apple pie. You know, what can I show support? And I so I was you know it's there was multiple floors in the Portsmouth Hospital. It's a big hospital. And I wind up on one of the quarter deck watches, I wind up seeing this giant. He's walking down the hallway, civvies, his jeans, cowboy boots. I was telling Hunter on the way here, he's wearing a Texas Rangers hat, a uh, shirt, hat, shaggy, but he had this, this walk. And I just, but I remember seeing him and I was like, this is Marcus's brother. This is Marcus. missing. And, and literally when I, so I go up to him, you know, like, Hey, mister. <laughs> you know? And when he stared at me, he stared into my soul. <laughs> he does that. He, he had this look, like in the military in boot camp, they call it like a thousand yard stare. But I just remember him like sizing me up without even moving his eyeballs. And I was like, I just want to do a painting for your brother. Was, this is walking out of the hospital. This is him walking out of the hospital. I'm at a quarter day. He called me right after this. This is how yeah. we met. No way. Yeah, this is how we met. I'm at, I'm at a podium and I seen your brother. And like I said, it just, he just stood out and he was walking, stay in his lane, mind his own business. But he was just, and I just went up to him. I was like, hey. And I told him, I was, <laughs> you know, and he was like, what's up, dude? I'm like, what? And I told him, I was like, look, I don't want to do, no motive. I just want to do a painting for your brother. And I said, how can I get in contact with you? He gave me an email. Yeah. And after, like, he questioned me, sized me up with multiple questions, and he gave me an email, and then that was it. And then I was hoping to hear from him. I sent him an email. I went up seeing him again. I ran up to him like some crazy ex-girlfriend. <laughs> That's what he said. So, you know, because he's, he's mean. He is. He's, he's mean. mean when he was in. I mean, he's mean. He's a congressman now, so he's double now. <laughs> but he, he called me. I was like, oh, damn. This one. Some guy wants to give me a painting. He's like, this, girl. He goes, I normally wouldn't do this, but this son of a gun went out of his way. <laughs> and, and, I, and I did. I remember just cranking it out. And I, and I, I That's what he said. He's like, your enthusiasm? We stopped him right there at the doors, right? <laughs> yeah, literally. And, but I just remember him looking down at me. But he was just, like I said, it was, I've had people stare at me, but this was just like, all right, they just went on myself. Yeah. You know? He's always, a helicopter crash messed him up pretty bad. And he's, you know, he's always in pain. He's always pissed. And I wind up seeing him again. I told him, I said, I have the painting. He's like, go get it. And and I came back. And when I started explaining, excuse me, when I started explaining the painting, he's like, come here, man, sit down. And when I went over certain things I wanted to incorporate about the story, you know, the deployment, everything that took place. And he was just, he said, thank you. He's like, I, wanna, I promise you I'm going to see your brother. And then shortly after that, we called, we spoke. Originally, I was hoping to get like a, a seal coin from you or something like that. I was like, maybe I'll get a coin from him. But really, even if I didn't, I just had the, the honor of knowing that I did it for you, the painting. And from there, it just took flight. Just I stayed in contact. He's like, take my number. And I've called your brother on multiple occasions just to talk, to bro it out, advice, mentorship. But, so talk about your art. It went sure. from, like, how, what do you, how do you paint now? Because it went from graffiti, it's, it's evolved. So it went from, that's right, it, went, it definitely evolved. It went from graffiti to you know, making it to it's a, a piece that actually shares like a story. Because we talked about that. When you called, I was, you know, I was like, I want to do something for you. I was like, well, I got, this is the idea I got. I was like, I want some codes and some keys and little hidden stuff inside those paintings. So I took that and I ran with it yeah. to the end zone. And, and I've been doing that. Your since. art's all over my walls. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, the, the, you understand, yeah. I, I watch You haven't been in the house yet. I've seen social media, I have not, but I every time I see I'm like, Man, I did that for them. I never would have thought, you know, that this would have been displayed in your studio and the podcast. That's really, I'm honored. I really am. So I wind up, after doing that painting for you, it just went and, and took flight where, because of you, I was able to do the painting for Mark Wahlberg. 
I was able to do the paint, uh, painting for Dwayne Johnson. You also were able to hook it up with um, the CEO of the Chive. So the, the one I, that we came up with was there's, there's multiple paintings. To, when they're put when they're put together, they complete the puzzle. They complete. But we the puzzle. auction them off separately and then tell anybody that the freaking puzzles are in there. No, the, so later on, people will come back and collect them. They're, they're gonna be. I had a brilliant idea to make no, you a famous artist, bro. I've been working on it nonstop. I'm glad you never gave up on it. So with this one, this is the one that we're gonna be giving away that Marcus agreed to sign. But most people, if you look at the painting, you you probably wouldn't see everything off the rip. Hunter, let me know if I need to move left or right. It's good. Okay, so That's perfect. So when you see this painting, just in a, a few seconds, what do you see, uh, Marcus? My eagle, the T and Q, and then the helicopters in the background with okay. the body operator. So angle it right a little bit. So what most Towards people, me. what most people wouldn't see right away, is not only you'll see the two helicopters, but this is episode three five two. So I put that in the top left corner, and then behind the the microphone, the podcast microphone, you'll see it's actually an operator, the silhouette holding an M4, and behind his right shoulder is the trident wing. Oh, I see that, yeah. And then it goes off to the side, and it has on the side, I wrote, the execution of my duties will be swift and violent. It's from the Navy SEAL ethos. Yep. And then I put team uh, T and Q at the top in the old English font, and in a baby blue font, I wrote, you would have to really zoom in on it, but it says Mojo, and at the top, where I put Thasm Gallery on the S, I wrote Southern Boy and uh, your Buzz class, which is 228. So there's the things that many people probably want to see. And the thing that's, it's money layers in the painting. And I've heard you say this on the podcast, but knuckle up, uh, buckle up buttercup. So that's below the team never quit. Great phrase around here. <laughs> so it's, and in all the paintings, there's multiple signs, quotes. And sometimes I'll put scripture, just what mm -hmm. I'm, you know, if I'm in the studio painting and if I know someone's personally going through something, so it's it's interesting, but I think the paintings that I do will describe identity, a story, and and express someone's life. Sure. So. Shia LaBeouf taught me that art is anything that moves you. Mm -hmm. uh, when he said that, I was like, that's that's about right. And then the, the the greatest part about it is the ones that are there are meanings behind some things that you you don't even know. They mean something personal to you, and then they're they're, they're professional. She brought in some art yesterday. And she said the name of it and was handing me and I was looking at it and then she had another piece in her hand and the name fit that. Mm. So, I mean, yeah, art is truly in the eye of the beholder. So do you do that with all of your pieces? Do you have the hidden codes? Yeah, and every single one. Now, sometimes a client will request, it, I want this. Yeah, so and we did that for the kids. They don't even know it. That was the cool part. Is like when the parent calls up, and when you when we start when you started doing that, I was like, "Hey, put this in there for these suckers." Yeah. So later on, when they see it. Do you want a confidence boost that won't break the bank? Well, Hems has got you covered. Your go-to for affordable sexual health solutions with their alternatives to Viagra and Cialis. They're clinically proven and up to 95% cheaper, some even as low as $2 a dose. You can finally skip those awkward in-person doctor's visits and no insurance is required. All you gotta do is answer a few quick questions online and your tailored treatment is on its way. One low price covers everything, the treatments, the visits, and the deliveries. It's the ultimate confidence destination. And besides the fantastic performance benefits, my beard's even been fuller and my hair's looking better than ever. Don't wait. Go start your free online visit at hymns.com slash TNQ. That's H-I-M-S dot com slash TNQ for your personalized treatment options. Your confidence roller coaster is about to be a thrilling ride with hymns. Check it out at hymns.com slash TNQ. The one I did for Mark Wahlberg with his, I remember I wrote Wahlberg. I believe I put his boys' names. I believe I had two sons. I believe I could be mistaken. I put his kids' names. There were certain words that you wanted that I, I put in there. And they're sure if I looked at the painting, I probably you know this was years ago. Hmm. But I, it's it's true. It's and I and I when I do show somebody the painting, they're like, I see it now. Mm -hmm. so the one Dwayne got was of him and Mona. The Mona. Yes, <laughs> the one I did for the Rock. 
I mean, that's got it was for his daughter. Yes, that's what. It was yeah, for yeah, his yeah, yeah. Yes. I mean, that's got to be cool having a painting of your dad who was in a freaking cartoon, right? When you get older. <laughs> so, so anyone that's listening, it is true. I have friends that mock me and joke me. They like, nah, you you're just doing. You say, I'm like, no, I've done these paintings for these people. I'm telling you, yeah. like. So it's true. You heard it from Marcus. You heard it. <laughs> Do you want to talk about that painting behind you? Sure, sure. So for this one, obviously, I know that the, the, the Charles are very passionate people about Texas. So what I wind up doing is I, I took the, instead of the star, I put the bone frog. And then you'll see at the bottom right, as Hunter's going to zoom in on the bottom right of the, the Texas flag, I put the great state. You'll see multiple times at the top right. Texas and then uh, Walking in Memphis was Marcus's song that I believe he really enjoys. And at the bottom, I put that, that date, the November 27th. I believe it's our anniversary. anniversary. Correct. Mm-hmm. And then you have the ATM, the college state. Texas a and baby. And I just know uh, Marcus is a family man, man of faith. So I wound up putting the scripture. Proverbs. That's the best thing you could have put on there to get me out of trouble. <laughs> <laughs> she has to stare at that every time she walks in here, and she's, you know, I, and I do too. I'm the like, the hey. Proverbs 18 uh, 22, the scripture, he who finds a wife finds good and receives favor from the Lord. And at the top, I put all the, the kids' names. And 1820, like 822, that's Proverbs my Proverbs 1822. That's my Bud's class backwards. Yeah, 228. No way. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I knew that. <laughs> I know you did. <laughs> I did. I did on purpose. Yeah. But and then and then you'll see the top right. The team never quit. I I did multiple things. I from the Navy Seal ethos. There's possibly in there. I don't remember what it was exactly. But just everything that I do. There's just a lot of messages. Like layering. Let la- multiple layers and thing that's meaningful. What's that type of art called? You know what? Someone asked me that yesterday. And I didn't have a name yet? And I could have, you know, Google The way it. you layer that to where it comes up like that? And and it's, like I said, it's every piece that I do, it's it's the only one made. It's original piece, one of a kind. And on the first one that I actually did for you, it was just very sentimental. I wonder, I remember I put Daisy. I put uh, things that were just, I knew that mm-hmm. were very important to you. I remember even incorporating the mountain. You know, we're not going in too, too deep on it, but I just remember, like, and I could later on after the podcast. My Spider-Man one's upstairs in my kid's room. The Hulk one's in the hallway. And then and that, the other one that we were talking about, the, the Captain, Marvel. The, Mon- the, the uh, collage. Marvel. Oh, that one? Let the collage one. It has everybody in it. Let me tell you, that one. It's, it's, it's patched up. Kind yeah, of on, yeah, on, that one. Yeah. It's next to the Hulk yeah. in the hallway. Yeah. yeah. That one's good because we put the glass in there. And it, it stands Oh, the piece of broken glass. Oh, you're talking about yeah, all the broken glass I, I, I literally broke glass and mirror. And yeah, I and stuck it, it in there. That so. actually may be one of my favorite pieces it's of art. Better. It's better. It's great. so cool. It is. It's still cool to this very day. Mm-hmm. So about your story, though, like getting into the art, you went through some trials in the Navy with your own alcohol yeah. addictions yeah. and that kind of stuff. Do you want to yes. touch on that and like how you actually took your... Um, passion as a rebel kid on doing graffiti on the streets to who the whole reason you embraced that and started doing it on canvas is because you were going through an evolution. So joining the military, hands down one of the best decisions. Being raised in the broken home, looking for that structure, looking for that stability. Join the service. I have a little bit of it, but it's still not, there's a desire that wasn't fulfilled. Start partying, became my own little, my own best, worst version of me. Then kind of got stable or things kind of smoothing out when I had a friend of mine, his name's Ernie, Ernie Pena. And he wound up actually witnessing to me and telling, because six months into my marriage, my wife was going to divorce me. It was, if I was on fire, I didn't deserve to get spat at. Like I was just a hot mess. And I didn't want to be another statistic deep down inside. I didn't want to be, everybody was getting married and getting divorced the way they changed their run to wear yeah. in the Navy. And I just didn't want that. And I just- You grew up with it, right? Yes. Yeah. It was everybody in my family was either hooked on something, just in and out of relationships. I joined the military to better myself. Most people do. You know, they want out. They want to do good. And That's the place I, to go. And when I tell you this man, he, he, he was just a friend. He wasn't over the top. He didn't, you know, point out all my flaws. He was there for me, him and his wife. And I, I seen that. I wanted that. So I wound up getting saved. I became a born-again Christian. And it wasn't like, you know, I called my wife, and the next day we're running in the field to each other. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah, yeah. It was still drama, and I was having to, you know, try to start hit that reset button. But after things kind of, after I started behaving, 
I realized that, you know, with my artwork, I could probably maybe even take this serious and maybe make it a business. And I would I would doodle and Google uh, Google doodle in the MWR. It was a military w- w- welfare center. Is that what that? I believe that's what that stands yeah, for, right? Recreation, welfare and readiness, or something like that. Something like that. And it's we and should it, know that. I feel yeah, like we should know that. Us. And I want to, so I would I would I would I would draw and doodle in there in a, in a black book that I have. And when I say I, I maybe even eventually will sell the book just to give it away or something like that, but. I would do drawings, but people would stop by and they would be fascinated by the pieces that I was doing. I was requested to do tattoos and I started realizing like- You don't do ink though, right? No, no, uh, no, not like that. And I, re- I saw that there was money in it. And then and the Navy was providing me already a job. And on the downtime, now that I'm no longer drinking, I'm no longer getting, you know, doing the madness, I, I had more time on my hands and I started doing the drawings. And then from that, after your brother, I felt like really Mor- Morgan believed in me. I had I he does that. Like he is probably one of the scariest dudes walking around, and he'll tell you every problem about you. But if he believes in you, then he he won't and, let you go. Yeah, you and your brother, you're both very we get real attached. It's yeah, weird. I you're don't very know, big. You know, you're, 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 <laughs> I don't know you're, why we do that, but we do. You're tall men, but I believe Morgan's heart is bigger than his body. And I, I mean it, and like when I said, he, it was just, it was very sincere, it was organic the way it happened. And then I really owe a lot of my success to you and your brother, you know, really. Oh, I, yeah, no, I mean, yeah. It was, it was. It's all your hard work, bro. Was, was, well, when, that's at, the what, best. at what point though, um, did you find out that your sons had a disability and? Yes, so ap- after, like I said, after, you know, the, the salvation came into play, marriage is back on track and then the artwork is kind of taking flight from the people i already mentioned before and then the wife and i we decide to have a ch- we have a child we didn't find out right away about anthony jace my oldest son but he was a boy we thought maybe it was gonna be a little bit of a, a disability too far as maybe to respond and uh i remember it like it was like yesterday but in the in the hospital i'm gonna try not to get choked up on, on on your podcast but i remember in the hospital he's he's over two years old and they're doing all these studies so i'm like i'm looking at my son go through this i'm watching my wife suffer emotionally but i remember they um they they found out that he they so they tell they tell me my wife after all these testing that like the final one that he's got like severe hearing loss you know or profound hearing loss so now I'm still fighting this. You know, I never heard my father say, I love you. My heartbeat, my cadence is, I just want my son to hear his dad say, I, I love you. So the doctor tells me that your son w- w- won't be able to hear. And I remember, and, I, and so I told the doctor, I said, you're telling me my son's deaf. And then, you know, the nurse, they're quietly, you know, they're trying to be diplomatic about it. Oh, yeah. And I, I just remember just, it was, it was like, my heart was crushed, but it was out. It, it, it was, there was so much happening. I'm watching my wife just, you know, process this all. And I, ju- I just remember I, was, I just stood quiet. And I'm a pretty optimistic person and outgoing, but it was like, it was like life just got sucked and ripped out. And, and I remember we, wa- we walked back to the car. And when we sat in the car, my wife just shattered. And it just got to a point where. As a father, as a man, you, you're trying to do so much. And money, it matters, but it's not everything. So to make a long story longer, I, it was a team never quit moment for me, where at that point, it, it was so easy because hope, faith, everything went out the window. And I remember just driving, and I'm questioning myself, my, my, and I'm like, why me? Why my wife? Why my son? And it was, it was brutal, it was dark, and we didn't give up and thank God for our good friendships with people in the church, having a good circle. I called your brother. I remember even you guys one time like saying, Hey, we're praying for you, you know? And it was just, uh, it was, it was, it wasn't just embracing life. It was just, I can't really explain it. The hardest part I think was even releasing my son for the surgery. You know, there's many people that have children that are born with different things, you know? So, it was thank god for the military they, they performed the surgery but i just remember giving my son away and he's under the amnesia so he's like half asleep so you're seeing your child in a, in a form that it's like this is not him and it was it was really dark and i just remember the surgery went well but then us getting our son back 
He had these stitches on his head everywhere. He's, he had blood because they put magnets pretty much. It's like on his skull, and they, the cochlear implants go on. It sends yeah. sound waves. It's very intricate, but he hears. You know, he hears me say "I love you" all the time, and it's it's really a miracle. And I would say, to, what his face look like when he's it, it, well, Anthony J's. He's 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 a he's a trooper, you know. And and what's what's I guess what's really crazy is like no one on my wife's side or no one on my side of the family had hearing loss. And then and we, you know you go through all that in life. It's like man, you know. Okay, so now our second child, Samuel Carter, where where everything's good, I wind up, we wind up going. You know they do like the after testings but they, the nurse brings rolls back, no, Samuel yeah. back in and she's like all oh, the tests came back good besides but he, he didn't the, the hearing so she doesn't know that we have one child but I just remember my wife just sinking in the you know the hospital chair you know the, the bed that the women lay on and they got the blanket on them and I just I, it was just it was so crazy but he, like I had to relive that mm-hmm. we both did and, and you don't realize it but Stuff like that. Same exact issue? Same, same. And, you, you know. So both kids were born without hearing. Correct. And when I say, it, and, you know, there was a there was an age gap, but you don't realize that it does so much to a marriage. To, you know, you, it's, you start isolating yourself. You start judging yourself. You become your own worst enemy. But my wife, thank God, she was grounded. Her faith. Um, again, it goes back to the, the circle of friends that we had. My pastor, Pastor Carlos Morales, he was a, a vital po- part as far as just keeping things glued together, just the encouragement. And it, it wasn't fluff. It, it wasn't someone just being nice. They, they genuinely were there. And, you know, just through prayer and just the support, our family, my mom, her, my, my mother-in-law, they're amazing people, my heroes. But so both of my kids have the, the cochlear implants. And uh, forgive me for getting all, I, I held back, man. There should be like <laughs> a tidal wave over here. I can't believe I, you know, but it just came to a point where I guess my team never quit moment was just, you know, I, we never played victim. We, I never looked down at my kids that, yeah, they have the hearing loss or they, you know, I, I say temporarily hearing loss, but when they got their cochlear implants. They hear now. They hear, yeah, they, you know, they're, they're running around, they're playing sports. Samuel, they got friends of my church. They call like, them oh, Tank. great, he can hear now. Yeah, yeah. Right, great, right, yeah. yeah. Now you got him like, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> there's, t- there's times I wish I had cochlear <laughs> implants. I'm like, right now I don't want to hear this. Maybe I should have rethought that. No, but, but it's, it's, it's really beautiful that, you know, it's like I said, thank God for technology. And even if there wasn't, and we, you know, and we're learning sign and stuff like that. It was, it was something that I'm. Um, I'm just grateful to be a father and not just a title. Like I, I'm really grateful to be in their lives, both of their lives. And I, 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 it's very humbling to be a dad, but I, like I said, it was, it was brutal to not hear or to not be heard. Correct. And yeah. it, you know, like I said, there's so many other things, but, um, but that was. Did it different. affect their speech? So they, they now Anthony, he's nine, and he's he's gone to programs at ODU and it's Old, uh, Old Dominion, this college. They had campuses to facilitate that. Yeah. It was all very new to us, and now he's in a school where they're doing both, and you know he, they go to multiple appointments. So as the kids get older, their hearing will be superb, and they you could tell a little bit. You know, there's a, sometimes you could certain words you cannot pronounce, but I would say I'll fix that. So as that comes as, out as the they way, I mean, yes. they'll fix that. But I mean, they I, are able to talk. And yes, yes, and they hear, and it's 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 ver- There are things that you know waking the kids up in the morning. We sometimes stomp, shake the bed, touch every night. I'll pray over the kids. I, I you know, they're they're very with their senses, and uh, I, I we make light of it, but I'm like they're like my little X Men. Sure, they're they're like like little, all those just got to be heightened. <laughs> so and these young kids, these man, they're different. <laughs> They're not like us, man. They got special gifts. Hand eye coordination, everything. <clears throat> but I didn't mean to go off on a tangent. You no, know. it's a special part of your story and your testimony of, um, and that, like, that the art has become your outlet. Um, like, every, all, all of us get a, a hand dealt. Yes, Marcus. There's this, there's this thing. It's like, hey, man, when you, you know, Jesus always said, get your cross, pick it up, and carry it. So like when you get it tacked on you, it can crush you. You can be that person when everyone looks at you like, yeah, I, I know why he acts that way because he got he, he got dealt. No, you can pick it up and be positive in everything that you do, and you do that. That's an example. That's why we're sitting in this room together, right? Outlook. I mean, perspective. Be, you're out there scratching some stuff on the side of a train. To, to we're doing this now. 
mm-hmm. and we're still going. We're just getting started. That's right. And and like I said, it's, it's right, confidence has to build in you. It's 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 incredible. And then even like you know, we go places and we do sometimes get people stare. You know, sometimes that inner New York, I'm like, what are you looking at? <laughs> what are you staring at? But there's now I, I realize that it's a fascination where people are very marveled by it. And it's a good conversation starter. Well, I'll tell somebody, oh, they're, they're cochlear implants. What are you looking at? You know, I'm not ugly about it. Mm-hmm. I try to, you know, have favor where I go or be polite to people. But they have it. They hear. And it's, it's cool because there's times where my son, like if mom is clean your room, he'll be like, dad, can I take them off? I'm like... Keep them on. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so when he's older, when he's so their like, exterior, you can see them. <laughs> yes, you'll see both of them uh, on their on their heads, on, okay. the, on the back of their skulls. Yeah. And that technology progresses all the time. You, and who knows? Years from now, they may be as small. small like, yeah. Right. Won't be able to see it. So now they're. You they're, know that's coming. Right. And they're they're smaller, so they smaller heads, so it looks kind of large. But as they get older, okay. So I I'm a firm believer in this. Now that we have kids, is like some of that stuff that our kids get put on them is on purpose by the good Lord, so they'll stay humble. Mm-hmm. That's true, and they're both good-looking kids. And I was just about to say, I was like, they're probably beautiful, they right? They really are. So my kids are like, hey, I got this. I'm like, you're freaking beautiful, okay? Nothing's wrong with you except for that little thing. Suck it up till you become a teenager. Uh-huh. And then you grow it's out of that. crazy what kids will pick out about themselves. I mean, I can't, I honestly just cannot think of anything wrong with our yeah, children. So we don't even notice. Like, but I, I they even... will pick out one little freckle or... Addie complains that she has hair on her legs. I said, everybody has hair on their legs. When you get to a certain age, hair. you get to shave it. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, and you know, obviously the audience that follows this page, a lot of military, a lot of pe- people mm-hmm. from different ages, different mm-hmm. states everywhere. But like you said, Marcus, everybody goes through something. Everybody has, you know, that in front of them, that now what? Mm-hmm. That uncertainty. And I, I, like I said, I'm just very grateful. I probably would say what got us through the most is it wasn't the, the prayers that we were saying. It was like the, the prayers that were in the reservoir that we were able to pull from prior to that. So, and we got through and like I said, it, there were things though that was just a lot of, a lot of mental fog that just, why? What, what? And, but we didn't, we didn't give up. And Have you ever read the backstory of any famous artist? It sounds just like the one you just described. Like, you can't be a famous artist and everything be fine. Right. Like, when I look into your family and I look at your art, it needs to kind of coalesce. Mm-hmm. So when you, when you sit up here and you're telling us everything goes, yeah, man, artists do that. Yeah, that's how art is created is out of... Chaos it, in life, man. Yeah. Yeah, and now it's interesting. So I'll be painting sometimes and Anthony's fascinated by it. I was going to say, is he getting into it? And he likes it. And I'll, I'll tell him, hey, this is what you do. You want to splat. And I'll, we do a lot of, I do a lot of stencil art too, you know, just to, for speed and process. And, and it's, and he loves it. And it's, uh, yeah, just even talking about him. Just what about like, Samuel? What's he into? Samuel Carter, he's, I was, I've said it earlier, but he's, so his nickname in the church is the tank, you know, cause he's, just, he's like a little man. He's, he's two foot, you know, a little baby, little two year old, but just tough as nails. And, he hasn't been much of a painter. He's been more of a throwing cars, a destroyer, <laughs> a destroyer. A destroyer. Yeah. But he's just tough as nails, and uh, and it's 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 very interesting. But you know, I guess everyone wants a you want a healthy child, a healthy baby. Everyone's desire. But even now, seeing Anthony help his little brother with the ears, and like they they like ready you and your brother, you guys have a bond that's unbreakable. For whatever, my brother. Yes, we we do absolutely. You're so, damn right. You know, and it's it's just forged the, in adversity. Yeah. So so it's to the point where, yeah, my kids don't have a trident together, right? On that that you know, but it's they have their bond between the ear, like with the cochlear implants, mm-hmm. that I believe is unbreakable. And I think it's for me, it's it's I think that's like okay, you know what? Yeah, like you said, it's they can you know, much easier it is for them to go through that together. Yes, so that's what I mean. It's not alone. You're not doing mm-hmm. this alone. It's no better feeling than having a battle buddy, mm-hmm. a swim buddy, suffering there with somebody else. Because so. then you're not suffering. They are. Mm-hmm. And then today's world we live in. You know, you got you know, it's it's different. Bullies in the '90s, you would punch in the arm. Now it's you know, it's so. But yeah, I mean, some of those older brothers, you would see them. They would wear those just so their younger brother wouldn't feel embarrassed. Right, 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 right. So people shave their heads. Yes, people freaking do. All kinds of stuff to make other people feel better about themselves. That's that's true. Goodness. Yeah, I, I'm very grateful to to 
be on the podcast and to share bits and pieces of my story. And I, like I said, that was a highlight just besides getting free from addictions, getting free from just being lost and, and confused. And now, you know, being a father, like I said, I, this, this May will make 17 years being married to my beautiful wife. And and she's really, you know, I asked a friend of mine was like doing like a little mock interview with me yesterday. He was like, who's your hero? And I was like, oh, stop, you know, and then I was like, I was like my wife. And then I also said, you know, her mother, Judy, she's her mom's. They have the same name. But when I say her, her mom's been an angel just from being an ear to listen, you know, when I'm going through stuff, just very gentle, their whole family. But just um. I'm really, I'm sitting across from you guys, but I'm just so humbled to be here. I'm very grateful. And it's, and just even to share my story, I'm just like, I I don't take this lightly, you know, I'm just very honored to be here and, and to share this. Well, we appreciate you coming you know, out right? and we're excited to help kind of spread the awareness about your art. So one of the things that we talked about doing was taking this piece of art that you did and doing a giveaway on our social media. And so we're gonna do, um, on all of our social media platforms, we're going to do a giveaway. Um, and you already described what's on it, but we also talked about doing prints of it and selling that on our website. But if somebody wants to have their own commissioned art, how do they get a hold of you? They just send me a direct message through the Instagram, the T-H-A-S-M gallery dasm gallery and you know i'm very fair on the prices yeah you know i just i just do this you know because i love it so how, what's thasm stand for so <laughs> quick story uh, originally i was writing sm it was short and the the <laughs> don't joke me too much on this but the original sm it stood for sexy mafia Mm. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. This is, you're going to go viral, you know, but. Totally something from Queens. Yeah, typical <laughs> New York, but that was the original name. You know, in high school, you get a nickname and that was. that? Sexy Mafia. Sexy right there, Mafia. Yeah. And then, and then my friends, like, they're like, I'm not calling you that, bro. I'm like, dude, it's Sexy Mafia. Like, no, I'm not. call me that. Yeah. <laughs> and then. That sounds like a New York time. Bro, I can't call you that, man. I just can't do it. And then the next day I know. I call you a lot of things. I can't call you that. You know what I mean? <laughs> and the next day I know, Mark, is one of my buddies like, hey, just SM. And I was like, it sticks. And then. So, uh, in graffiti, you, you put your tag and then you put like, yeah. a crew. Or like, let's say when you sign something, you put yeah, you your name with. and you buzz class. Yeah. So it's like the crew you're with. So the crew that we I had was THA. It's the highest around. And whether it's flashy, cool guy, whatever. And I just wound up merging the two. And it, it, I said, Thazm. And they're like, man, that's cool. And I stuck with it. And then as I got older, when I was trying to be professional, you can't tell someone, hey, you know, hey, buy this expensive painting. I do graffiti. People are like... Grab your purse, you know, get the kids. And so I wanted to, you know, clean it up a bit. So I added the word gallery and I made it Thasm Gallery. It works. And people love it. And they, and I, I so that's it. Doesn't, doesn't. Yeah. Do you have you, a friend named Vinny? I do have a friend named Vincent and he's a close friend of mine, but sometimes I'll call him Vinny. Because I don't have a Vinny in my crew. I really want one too, especially from New York. I, you know what I'm talking about? My cousin Vinny. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I feel like if, you could do. I don't, do, I don't you, have one, dude. You do, if you get a Vinny, you could also do a Vincenzo, Vanu. Yeah, I don't I don't have a Vinny. I don't have a, uh, well, I need a good, oh, like an Abner, you know, something uh, real abstract. I don't have either of those in my crew. So have you stayed in touch with or gotten back in touch with any of the guys that you used to do graffiti with and get in trouble with? You know what? So this is it's a great question, too. Most of my, my friends, unfortunately, they're either in jail, mm. bunch of baby mama drama mm. on the run uh, or, or not alive. Mm. And it was just the life that they chose to, you know, pursue. And like I said, I, I was really I got lucky joining the service. And there, I would say one specific friend, his name is Santo Lampardo. He's my best friend to this day. We would we would go paint walls, run away from the cops, you know, chase girls. You know, now he's married. He's got an amazing wife, two sons, and we still stay in touch. But that's, I would say, he's probably the only one out of so, so many artists. But, but uh, no. It's funny to watch those guys who walked on the edge for so long when become fathers. And our kids start to do that stuff. You're like, God, what's the matter with you? Where'd you get that? Why do you act like that? And you're like, how are you like this? Wait till they hear what we did. So 
Does it make you look back and think like, oh, I could have ended up like him? There, there's been many, I call them heart checks mm -hmm. like, or a pulse check. Many times that where someone texts me, so-and-so died, mm. so-and-so overdosed, so-and-so commi committed suicide, where it's, you know, that, that I'm telling you right now, I'm able to sit in front of you somewhat cleaned up, but I, I was... I was a hot mess years ago. Like I feel like all of us have to go through something like that. It's like a rite of passage. Well, and it just proves, like y'all said earlier, that the military does serve a really awesome purpose to our youth that don't really have a dad figure. Like the military is a dad figure to so many young men and women that just feel a little lost. And even if it's well, just it's base, four too. years, yeah. yeah, just gives you a little bit of foundation that and structure that you need. And Safety that, blanket. Yeah. Food, water, shelter, it, it, and they pay you. And you know you can at least do it for four years up to 20. Anybody that's even like that's a, subscribed to your page, I would, I, well, no matter what age you are of it, join the service, whether you need it or you want to serve your country it's 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 a it's incredible yeah, there's no downside to and, it yeah and every branch has their pros and cons sure you know like i said i joined the navy and it was it was amazing to me and my family i'm, I'm so i'm so grateful and i've over the years i've collected like coins i have like a, a few in my in my house and i'm just like they're reference points and i yeah. and but i like i said i love it and and you're right it's it's such it it created not only a, a structure it created um habit think it gave me uh, like a routine a routine that's mm -hmm. it great word it teaches you what works in america because when you come out if you're like how, how do i make money we'll show you that well and it helps i mean you never suspect that your kids are going to have a disability where they're going to need surgeries and all of that which can be so expensive in the civilian world oh, yes, but you're right the military helps pay for that yes and i mean it just it's a blessing all the way around well, thank you for coming on our show. We appreciate uh, you. Thank you both. Thank you all, Hunter. Big shout out to you as well. Of all course, right, say so your much. say your tag again. Your yes. social media. My, my Instagram handle is Thasm Gallery. T H A S M G A L L E R Y. Thasm Gallery. No spaces. No underscores. Marcus, thank you so much. Melanie, a million thanks. And, and anybody that buys a painting. You're, you're oh, I'm sure we'll have a couple <laughs> that I'll, uh, I'll hit say, you. Yes. I'll, I'll do everything I can, I can think of a couple of my Patreons sure, that'll probably sure going to hit you up. Yeah. Special. <laughs> Everybody wonder where I get my art? This is my artist. Yeah. All right? <laughs> so, well done, brother. Awesome. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, appreciate you coming down here. And thank you, everybody, for listening. Uh, don't forget to go check out his page. He really does have the best art. We literally have his stuff scattered all around our walls. It's so cool. And with that being said, we'll see you guys next week. This is the Team Never Quit Podcast. Podcast. So buckle up, buttercup. <laughs> <laughs>